Here at Untold Stories, we believe that public relations should never be mixed with effective journalism, that those in the line of fire should be shot with a pen, and those who deserve applause should likewise be treated to our ink, film, and production quality. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force has been a soft target for many a journalist. But tonight's episode of Untold Stories takes you into their world. From the nightmarish tales of training days to recording statements of buggery, we pounce on purveyors of contraband, ticket lawless drivers, and naturally, we end up on a high-speed pursuit 50 miles offshore. We partake in community policing like you've never seen. Tonight, Untold Stories goes where local journalists dare to go. Beyond the sirens. The newspapers have done a number on them. Pundits and propagandists have talked about them and spun the news. I carried what was supposed to be the cover of the impacts report. Not a word on that. They had been plagued with grossly inefficient leadership for many years. You're working beside men and women of the highest integrity. And this should be what is expected of you and what is expected of your colleagues. Their 1,175 officers have all been painted with the same American brush. The headquarters have seen more fights than the MGM Grand. But hundreds of them in nearly every district rise daily. Proud. Ready to serve and protect. Despite the impacts, the naysayers, the Americans, the challenges with manpower and resources. The question is, why do they do it? My father is a police officer, my uncle, so I think it was maybe predestined. Hold on, sir. Hold on, sir. Say, good afternoon. Constable 6 and what you call my sister. On both sides of the spectrum, yes, in that of my father and also my mother's side, we have police officers on both sides. My father being a veteran of 37 years, retired as a sergeant. And on the Chico side, we have a number of police officers within the organization itself. Actually, my dad wanted me to be a police officer because he used to be one and then he always wanted one of his children to be a police. I guess I was the one who took up the challenge. After leaving school, I wanted to be in a secure job to help my mom. So I said, if I join the police force, it's a government, you know, job and, you know, I'm going to secure a job for, for 20, 20 years. We just went into this thing, a lot of us as an employment opportunity, not a career path. There were one or two of the, 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 the persons on my course who were older than the rest of us. And I must mention um, ex-commissioner Regis. Um, some of the, the recruits on my course used to call him Daddy Ridge because of his experience and everything. And he guided us well on that course. Today we are here to give you a lecture on emotional violence, okay? Yes. So during the course of the lecture, I would like you to listen very attentively. I chose this path no because um, I was always interested in making a difference. And I felt that with the police force you can reach more people. You can reach people that I need. Because if there is a problem in a community, who do people come to? The police. Close the gap, Joseph. Get there. Every time your left foot hits the floor, you crap. Seven. Down. Up. Eight. Down. Up. Nine. Down. I didn't want to be there. I'm not even sure if I can, I can do a pull-up. We had to do pull-ups, it was, 
how can I say, it was impossible for me. First week at training school, I said, okay, this is the wrong choice. Little do I know it was the one that's preparing you for the outside world. The part that was most challenging was the running. As a result of my behavior during my training, I was locked up most weekends. By the time training was done, I was like a lollipop. Like my head was big and my body was small. So like it was it was it was really terrible. I I broke my ankle during the training. But to make it even more testing, I couldn't get a shoe push. to fit. Resist. Resist. Push. Hello, what love thing is that? Push the man. John, push the man. Push him, John, push him! The first week was like hell for me. And I asked to go back home. But I, I was refused. If you don't have the mind or the heart, especially the heart, you will quit on the first two days. In police terminology, a beat is the territory and time that a police officer patrols. Beat policing is based on traditional patrolling and utilizes the close relationship with community members within the assigned beat to strengthen police effectiveness and encourage cooperative efforts to make a community safer. Beat police typically patrol on foot or bicycle. This encourages more interaction between police and community members. The art is a front line of every police service and has been effective from the black and white era. Every hour to the hour you would have a corporal of police or sergeant of police checking you on the beat. Have to report to him what you observe and then he would Initially a pocketbook, you would have to have the time you started, what you, any report that you have to report to him, it would be noted. Ex-convict, you would have to have that in your pocketbook to make certain if there's a report later on, you already have a suspect. Not much has changed over the past 52 years since Cyril was a rookie. You need to put something to distinguish the... I supervise a group of officers, more or less, in responding to reports at Beaton Patrol and also patrols in the city. We conduct searches upon persons that we see look suspicious. Um, even on properties too. Castries, like many other cities, is plagued with vagrancy, petty drug dealing, and frequent violent episodes. Beat and patrol are the first responders. The biggest challenge of all is dealing with the crowd when there is an incident in town. Everybody crowd up, like people do not know the essential of um, crime scene. They intend to patrol on the, on the crime scene, and that is a hazard for everybody. 
But I told you to move from there. I was moving. I was at the back. I told you to move from there. I want my shoe before I move. The department handles thousands of reports annually. The majority of them are summary offenses. They do so with a complement of 145 officers. We lack manpower. In the entire police force, there is a shortage of manpower. Vehicle, likewise. Sometimes reports are made and we have only one vehicle, and in some places like Castries, there are several reports at one time, and you cannot handle all at the same time. We have one vehicle, we have to wait, and that is a problem. At um, Community Relations, we provide lectures. We believe in being proactive rather than reactive. So what we do is we educate the young ones in order to make a difference before they go out there in the world. We deal with interventions where If there is a problem at the school, the principal will call CRB, say between two children, a fight or a threat or an assault. What must you do if you encounter somebody causing emotional violence to others? Very good. Yes, you hear. You must report it to an adult or a teacher or police. Very good. A big round of applause. We've dealt with issues of kids who don't have anything to go to school, where we find donations for them to send them to school. We have a lot of donors that we'd go to if a parent just doesn't have uniform, books, money for transportation. We would seek that for them. We've dealt with situations where kids cannot talk to parents, but they could talk to us. We've had kids report things to us that they wouldn't report to teachers. They wouldn't report to their parents. We've had kids be open to us about sexual assaults that have taken place with them that nobody else knows. We've done counseling, the women of counselors. Everybody who is at CRB, they're at CRB because they want to make a difference personally. And it's not about the spotlight. Like many other departments, the community relations branch has a common Achilles heel. Lack of a vehicle. We have enough officers, but we don't have a way to get to the places that we want to go. Most profound experience is having to be a mother to children who are not mine every day. Makes me sad. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. When we return, we deal with sex crimes. Police raid the graveyard. Later. Go, 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 go! Every once in a while, a company will appear on the scene with a fresh perspective, a burst of adrenaline, and a passion for excellence. Its humble beginnings are steeped in social transformation. Last to enter the arena, it changes the status quo and the game will never be the same again. The independent film company appeared on the scene when the commercial sector needed it most. Its metamorphosis blossomed with the production of the most creative television commercials in St. Lucia, and they do it all absolutely free. From marketing concepts, surveys and research, to professionally produced ads for social media and television, and the most engaging documentaries in the English-speaking Caribbean. 
with heavy investments in technology and a focus on building the technical and service capacity of its nimble team, it prides itself on being the little company that could. The Independent Film Company Incorporated, changing yesterday's game, rewriting today's roles, and charting the way for multimedia production here, now, and beyond. Where most people see a window, we see a vision. We see the hours of development and testing, from the precision of craftsmen, quality of components, CNC processing to form immaculate all-glass products, the dedication of people who stand behind a product built to last a lifetime. And who knows, maybe after today, every time you look through one, you'll remember everything that went into it. St. Lou means windows doors and all glass products and customization of modular products to suit your needs. Precision, quality, safety. They're your windows and your world. Call us today at 454-6538. I watched him on the bed, knowing a man who has worked his entire life, can't afford the cost of his surgery or medication. Mom and I must sell barbecue tickets to help save his life. For less than $4 a day, the cost of a packet of gum, my dad could have been airlifted to get treatment. Some adults can be so insensitive with their lack of foresight. Now, mom and I either have to watch him wither away or sell a whole lot more barbecue. Why? because one person didn't care enough to plan. GTM Medical Insurance. Less than $4 a day for the greatest peace of mind anyone could ask for. Call us today, 2015, there was a 9% decrease in sexual offense cases reported throughout 2014. Official records show a 70% drop in reports of gross indecency compared to the previous year. However, there was a 25% spike in the number of rapes reported. These incidents, along with domestic violence reports, are pursued by the Vulnerable Persons Team. The ones that, that touch me, because at the end of the day, yes, I'm a police officer, but I'm human. And the ones that touch me are the ones involving young children. Especially, I would see the burglaries, because to see a, a young man just starting out life, you know, sometimes as young as 10 years old, they, they're buggered by an older gentleman who I don't know, maybe he was a victim of it himself when he was younger or something. And he commits that crime or that offense against a young child. Sometimes it's hard to put aside your feelings. There was this, this one, this one time when I went on the scene of an incident with a, a rape victim. And when we approached the scene, 
we did not even get out of the vehicle and that young lady burst into tears. And that, that was just so hard to, to hold back. It was, and to see the way she was crying and it was just painstaking to, to stay there. And we're not trained counselors or anything, so we have to refer them, whether it's to the Division of Human Services or to the Wellness Center, you know, to get counseling services. And after we do so, we need counseling ourselves. Behind this green wall is the state-of-the-art forensic lab where samples can be tested to conclusively identify a perpetrator or exonerate the accused. It is one of the best facilities in the Caribbean and has helped the vulnerable persons team solve many cases. Unfortunately, this green elephant has been closed for the past four years with no fixed date for its reopening. This closure puts considerable strain on this investigative team. The police force is a theoretically a legion of brothers and a few sisters, people charged with the responsibility to serve and protect. There is, however, a deep-rooted current of mentorship which envelops the organization. When I got to CID, I, I met two amazing people, supervisors at the time. One who's the inspector right now, um, that's Inspector Hilary Emanuel. Um, and I met Sergeant Ubeis. Emmanuel was like a father to me, like always there for me. And I really cherished him, to be honest with you. He would show me the ropes, you know, how to investigate, correct my reports, pull me to sit down, speak to me like how a father would speak to a son. If I would make a mistake, he would tell me, if you don't do it properly, I'll hit you. Yes, I've been a police force. When you just left training school, you think you're tough. You know, you get to go for all that training and you have to do that all the physical and all the, you know, karate and all these things. And there was a prisoner who was in the cell. He was making a lot of noise in the cell. And I said, okay, you know, fresh from training school, I'm going to stop him. But little did I know, the guy was a national boxer. And I got licks. I, just, I, I got my beating of my life. After that experience, I tell myself, look, let me focus on being a good police officer, a true police officer. Let me, let me be a role model to persons. We go out there, we, we learn who the, 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 the heads are, you know, especially all, all the, all the like, trouble spots. You know, we try to find out who the, person, who the leaders are and stuff. And we study those persons, you know. So, so 24 years ago and now, we had to step up a pace. We had to step up so that at least we know, okay, we're always on par with the criminal access out, out there. In conclusion of one of my homicide cases where they found a guy guilty, the deceased mother actually held me for like 10 minutes hugging me. Yeah, and she was like thanking me, you know, for investigating the case because the guy was convicted. He was given 35 years and she told me, Officer Matthew, you know what? God will bless you and let's thank you for everything. I know my son is gone. And there's nothing much I could do now, but thank you, thank you, thank you. Charlie what? Charlie, what's The first criminal investigations department appeared in London in Nottingham Borough Police Force in 1854, just as 162 years ago. Today's CID officers investigate firearm offences, murders, serious assaults, fraud, offences against property, and any other offences that require complex detection. The brutal gun attack at Black Mali. The young woman was reportedly gunned down in Wilton. He celebrated his 20th birthday on Wednesday. Gunmen opened fire on a parked car at Ward Washington. The murder of 44-year-old. On quarter of Castries for the murder of 18-year-old. They shot in the back following an alleged skirmish. In 2011, 52 people were murdered in St. Lucia the highest figure in over 10 years. The boys in blue managed to arrest the situation, bringing the 2015 murder rate to an all-time low of 29. Blood stained more streets in Castries than any other district. Firearms and machetes being the preferred weapon for crime. The CID has seen a 34% increase in firearm seizures and a correlated 19% drop in firearm-related offenses. 
despite all the quiet successes. This department is plagued. The lack of manpower, the lack of leaders apart from the supervisors on the shift. And when I say leaders, I mean like a senior constable, probably someone who has, who has the experience but has not gotten promoted. The challenges that we face sometimes, you know, is like more of human, human resource, you know, you know, um, you don't really get all the, the equipments and the necessary tools and stuff you need to, to do the work. Sometimes you really want to do a lot, you want to do, you want to go beyond, you know, but you have a lot of restrictions. Upon getting to Babylon, I took it upon my own to share with them what I have learned, you know, what I have learned from persons who are of higher ranks than me. You know, what I've learned, I put it in PowerPoint form, I have a little training with them, you know, and they really appreciate it. I invite the personnel from the Barbono, from the Rodney Bay and the grocery station to come on board as well. what I'm here for. For over 138 years, we've had your back. From home contents to medical, auto to business continuity. GTM Insurance. Sound, solid, and reliable. Where most people see a window, we see a vision. We see the hours of development and testing, from the precision of craftsmen, quality of components, CNC processing to form immaculate all-glass products, the dedication of people who stand behind a product built to last a lifetime. And who knows, maybe after today, every time you look through one, you'll remember everything that went into it. St. Lou means windows, doors and all-glass products and customization of modular products to suit your needs. Precision, quality, safety. They're your windows and your world. Call us today at 454-6538. Special Services Unit, we do point duty, which is the chaussee road. We attend to serious reports, like a shooting, chopping, stuff like that. And men, the mentally ill, we also do that. The first thing we are greeted by are the guys on the chaussee. Hey officer, y'all okay? Because they're always watching out for us. Where we get off, where, where we walk to, they're always looking at us. We were looking at them, but I think they're more into us. I find it comical that when I go to arrest or detain a female civilian, that there's always some kind of problem. They would say, no woman not arresting me. They'd always say that, you get that from the females. But as a female going to arrest a man, I've never encountered any problems. The males will just go if you will. Okay, officer, look me. Let's go with me. The lack of manpower. Because if you have to be on a point, sometimes for 12 hours, 8 hours, it's a bit tiring. Even if you try, but then your, your, when you become too tired, your attention, it will go down a bit. But if we had more persons, then we'd be able to split the sheet so that everybody would be able to work at the optimum. We have guys working 
12 hours and they only have one pair of uniform. They work every other day, every, every 12 hours, and they have only one pair of uniform. So they have to rush, wash their uniforms, and then to put that same uniform. If they get wet or whatever, they do not have, they just have to let it dry on them and continue their duty with that same uniform. Lack of vehicles, lack of even, even ammunition for training. Because when we go to the range, you'll say, they will say they have an, only a number of rounds. So that puts the training on a, on a back burner for us. We cannot have training as much as we would want to because of the lack of ammunition. And that's one of the biggest things in our department. Because you carry a firearm 24-7, and it's a continuous thing. Training needs to be a continuous thing. And not having ammunition, that's one of our biggest hurdles at the department. We have over 50 persons at the department. And when there's leave cancel, sometimes leave is canceled for three to four days for carnival and stuff like that. And guys have to be sleeping on the hard floor everywhere on courts because there are not enough beds, sufficient beds for everybody to get one. So that's one of the challenges as well. While the Special Services Unit remains the Department of Last Resort, there are officers who keep the force moving. Marching. Dancing. Blowing and stringing. The ones who are always blowing hot air who never really get to chase bad guys, who polish their tools and blow their brass. accident investigator. Also, I'm an outrider on a motorcycle, so I have other responsibilities also, includes es police escort, highway patrol, issuing of tickets, enforcing the traffic laws. Being on a motorcycle and it's, it starts to rain heavily, you know, um, and sometimes there's no place to shelter. I've been doing, let's say, escorts, as a matter of fact, and in the middle of an escort, you, you get torrential rain. And escort is, a, is something that when you, whilst you engage in it, you can't really stop. Especially, we, it's, it depends on who you're escorting to. Sometimes you're escorting the governor general. Will you stop and tell her, go, go along? No, you have to escort her in the rain. You'll be driving behind somebody or you'll be standing somewhere and you'll see someone overtake at the corner. You know? And sometimes even going to speak to this person poses a challenge to you. Now, one of the things I have observed, I have stopped many drivers before for doing some sort of 
you know, unlawful act while it's driving. And the passengers on board the vehicles will be the ones who will be basically attacking you, verbally, so to speak. Persons drive on the roads at ridiculous speeds. And I think if we on the road with radar guns, we can be better able to enforce those laws. Because persons are breaking those laws. Even where you have um, speed signs, persons still drive above, above the speed limit. Each cyclist, you're on the road, wherever you are, if you have equipment to connect to the transport system, so you stop a driver, he doesn't have his information on him, he gives you his name, his address, you can quickly check to see whether his license is paid. You, you know, you can check his vehicle number to see if his registration is paid, if his insurance is paid. Because they're like workhorses, 24 hours, round the clock. These vehicles don't get cold. The parts are not ready, they are going to do overheating. The Nissans, overheating problems. Regardless of the vehicles overheating, if you do proper maintenance, proper checking of the vehicles during the station and making proper records, we'll be able to salvage some of the vehicles. But some of the drive, once it starts, it's okay, out of there. The engine and the immobilizer, that have to refer to factory. You might always go to manual. Something to do with the key and whatever it is you have to clean The pickups are not ideal for police work. You cannot arrest somebody out in the, in the trail of a vehicle. The insurance doesn't cover anybody in the tree. And I find we have been, esc we have been escaping with it all the while, but it's one day, you have to stop. We have to get proper police vehicles. Coming up, we go on a boat ride. Life is a series of triumphs and trials. The circle of life has all the usual certainties. And of course, the unpredictable. Just one can affect you and your loved ones. Sadly, many fail to prepare for the unforeseen. Thankfully, we've been here for over 138 years, helping you plan and recover. We offer peace of mind at that critical moment. GTM Insurance, sound, solid, and reliable. Call us today at 458-6300 or log on to gtminsurance.net. Where most people see a window, we see a vision. We see the hours of development and testing, from the precision of craftsmen, quality of components, CNC processing to form immaculate all-glass products, the dedication of people who stand behind a product built to last a lifetime. And who knows, maybe after today, every time you look through one, you'll remember everything that went into it. St. Lou means windows, doors and all glass products and customization of modular products to suit your needs. Precision, quality, safety. They're your windows and your world. Call us today at 454-6538. Every once in a while, a company will appear on the scene with a fresh perspective, a burst of adrenaline and a passion for excellence. Its humble beginnings are steeped in social transformation. Last to enter the arena, it changes the status quo and the game will never be the same again. The independent film company appeared on the scene when the commercial sector needed it most. 
Its metamorphosis blossomed with the production of the most creative television commercials in St. Lucia, and they do it all absolutely free. From marketing concepts, surveys and research, to professionally produced ads for social media and television, and the most engaging documentaries in the English-speaking Caribbean. With heavy investments in technology and a focus on building the technical and service capacity of its nimble team, it prides itself on being the little company that could. The Independent Film Company Incorporated, changing yesterday's game, rewriting today's roles, and charting the way for multimedia production here, now and beyond. responsible for administration and training but um, before that uh, I am a qualified um, coxswain navigator, dive instructor, swimming and life saving instructor and a lifeguard officer. Now I'm acting sergeant um, at the marine unit. I'm responsible for the day-to-day -day maintenance of all vessels, um, from Defender right down to the smallest vessel. Yeah. Equipment on the whole, it's, it's lacking. Our fuel was financed by the US, but because of that impacts and so on, this has stopped. The government spent about $400,000 buying, well, new engines for us, new engines for the department. I think we need a bigger vessel. Um, and those we, we have presently, we need to do um, refits on. Good afternoon, sir. We are the police marine unit. We're doing our um, um, routine check of all vessels in the area. My name is Jimmy, and you sir. How many persons do you have on board? We just need my boss. Uh, three of you? Three persons on board. Um, what, where, where, where did I be now? Fish buoy. Uh, I don't see, yeah, yeah, you'll have a buoy, but do you know there is a flag you have to hoist on the flag? Because we don't want no vessel coming inside and they have diving, divers on there. You know, run over there. What's the name of the vessel? When we're doing interceptions with the drug dealers, I mean, that is very terrible, sir. Because you never know what they have on board, so you have to take all that into consideration. And there's no way that they will have whatever they have on board, and then they will allow you to take it. So they will do everything in their power to, to evade you. We have a nemesis, I mean, a lot, a lot of nemesis. Um, it's always possible you go out there and you never come back. Sometimes you out there on an open vessel, you're braving the, the, the sea, the rain, and you have to be there. Um, the other dangers are other boat users. They will come in night time without any lights, high speed. Sometimes you are out there, you will not see them they might run into you. All right? Yep. So you don't, you're not a owner? No, no, no. Just let it be. What's your name, sir? Timano John. Timano John. Where are you from? Um, Timonian. Timonian? Um, what else you have on board? You have yes. stairs? No. Just my bucket. My anchor. Line. 
your safety equipment. No mm -hmm. panic. As soon as you like jacket or more. No, I have, I have, but I do have it on board. All right. Yeah. So the next time you're coming out, yeah. make sure you have a life jacket on board. Okay. Um. Yeah. Well, you know the owner name, the owner of uh, your vessel. We just call him Big. Big. I am a father. I have brothers. I have sisters. And imagine you have to die for a, a child. And you could imagine the parents are on the beach watching and the emotions that they are going through. Family members say they last saw Oswald or Cassius Maxius early on Thursday morning. Police were called about 9.37 a.m. after someone noticed him floating in the water. And then when you have recovered that, that body and you have to speak to that parent, it's all different to Mulgan. I mean, it, it it sucks at your heart, it, it does a lot to you. Yo, it probably. You have to move it again. Check that thing. Check the, check the bottom. I know I've put in a lot um, into the marine. That's why I worked. That's what I knew. That's, it has been my life. Um, I've put in a lot there. And um, I mean, after working there for so long, you know, you. I mean, and, and at least not, not even nothing going in there, you know. After 24 years, that was my first promotion, you know. I mean, it was, it was, it was bittersweet, you know. It was bittersweet. It's not only about in raids and knocking on persons' houses in the morning. Police! Search warrant! Rama! But there's a lot more to it. Go, 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 go! If you look at drugs and drug trafficking, um, there's a supply and there's a demand for the drugs, so we are concerned with the demand aspect of it, trying to cut down as much as possible. Searches are conducted, apart from searches being conducted at different premises, searches of vehicles, vessels, and if you really look at the geographic location of, of St. Lucia, um, where it is positioned, and all the little islets and beaches that just the marine unit is, is just not sufficient to police our coastline. Getting to a plantation field, you have to be prepared because you do not know what you're faced with. Unlike doing a house search where you can do prior investigations, see what the house looks like, what are the possible um, obstacles you may face. Going in the fields 15, 25 miles, Inland, you do not know what you're faced with. But if you get to a field, and at the end, four, five hours, you've eradicated in excess of 10,000, 16,000 cannabis plants, there's some sort of satisfaction. Because you've prevented that amount from getting to the streets and getting into the hands of a child. I almost lost, lost my life, and um, it's, it will live with me for a long time. Um, then you realize that 
the job that you're doing is, is demanding, not only physical, but your life is put on the line. And it, it may be a positive too, because now that your, your eyes are open now, you begin to think outside of the box and the way you operate changes. And as a matter of fact, it probably makes you a more effective police officer if something like this do happen to you. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force has been a political football for forever. When it suits hopeless politicians, they use it to provide promotions to their boys. When it suits the partisan directorate, they use the Office of Commission of Police as a political outpost. When it suits political leaders, they use the RSLPF's Achilles heel to gain cheap political mileage. And both the yellow and red have been equally guilty. The deficiencies of St. Lucia's police force are not unique, but they are prolonged because of visionless leaders. The true praise goes out to the hundreds of officers who place their lives at risk daily to bring order to the roads, to protect our vulnerable, to investigate our infinite crimes against person and property, to patrol our porous borders, and to keep dangerous weapons off the streets. It is a thankless job, where the ones being served are the ones dishing out the insults. It is a job where even the employer seemingly conspires against the soldiers, yet they soldier on. It is not often untold stories rings out the basket of applause, but someone needs to simply say, thank you officers of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force for serving and protecting.